committee members are set when we get the meeting started. So, Dr. Davey, you all set? I am. I am. If I could just offer everyone a welcome and say, first of all, thank you for everyone who's here, uh, to our board members, to our auditors. Uh, Mike and Amy, thank you so much. Mr. Rossi, Ms. Patrick, Cedric. Um, nice to see, see you virtually. Uh, <laughs> and do we have any anyone else? Uh, Mr. Bell, on, it's just our auditor. No, nope, we have uh, Mr. Spilling as well. Oh, Mr. Spilling. Hello, Mr. Spilling. I, I can see you on top now. Okay, I'll have to put my glasses on. So thank you for joining us virtually as well. So welcome to our first meeting at our conference center. So this is exciting. Um, so Mr. Bell, I'm going to turn it over to you and and our, our committee, please. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davey. Uh, first item up on our agenda is to approval of the audit committee minutes from May 11, 2021. I'll move. Second. Moved by Mr. Herman. Second, Mr. McCabe. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I did see Mr. Spilling raise his hand uh, for the approval of that uh, agenda item. Thank you. Moving to the next one. Uh, in your packet, you see an audit committee timeline. We did include that in your packet. It's not on the agenda. So if you want to see if you had any questions, we're, we're happy to discuss that timeline um, as we move forward. We put on here an update for our state audit. So you may recall. State Comptroller's Office started an audit of CBS uh, that was put on hold when our office space got uprooted and we moved to the Plattsburgh Main Campus as well as ISC. We said we'd do our best to accommodate them. It may not be better than a closet, but we'd get them a space. They said we'd rather just move on to another job and come back to you in the fall. Uh, they just finished up a local school district audit. And now they're doing the city of Troy currently, I believe is the city that they're doing and they plan they're intending to come back in November. We do not have an exact date of when that'll be. It's whenever they finish up that mandated mandated audit um, of the city, then they're going to come join us. So we are expecting them to come back. Uh, we'll, we have space here in our, our new facility. We'll give them an office and uh, our uh, team will start to work with them. Any questions on that process for the state comptroller? Okay. Next item up is uh, claims auditor and payroll auditor uh, annual report. Uh, we like to have our uh, some of our claims uh, come to the meeting to meet with the audit committee, so you have an opportunity to hear from them directly. Uh, things that they may be seeing during the year, um, any comments they may have that they want to present to the audit committee. And give the audit committee really an opportunity to ask them questions. Uh, since this is a direct appointee of the board and they, uh, the claims auditors fulfilling the duties of the board, uh, we'd like to say, hey, this is your time to ask them anything. Uh, and uh, I'll start by introducing Angela Jeanette. She's, she's been doing this uh, for a long period of time for the board. And she's a, I would say, an asset uh, to the CBS board uh, with the work that she does. She's thorough. Uh, she's detailed and uh, she helps our team to find improvements to prevent mistakes from happening and reoccurring. So uh, it actually works out nice uh, working with someone that actually is in house uh, because it is um, someone that knows our operations, knows how we do things in the MOSIs, learns from this process, and actually helps us overall as an organization. Um, this it is allowed, or the claims auditor is allowed to be an internal employee as long as they are not part of or have any duties in the uh, business office function of our, our BOCES or the accounts payable process in particular. So uh, Angela does not have that. So she's able to do the claims on her work. So with that being said, Angela, I'd like you to just uh, pass it over to you and then ask the board if they have any, or the audit committee if they have any questions. I know you all might be busy in the month. Um, I just want to say that it's been a really good year for the new student So, 
Other than that, um, I, I don't have a lot to add as far as this system we've been doing has been amazing, really. And everyone's been extremely, you know, accommodating. Thomas found the corner to put me in. And they said, we made it work, you know, and with very little um, wrinkles, you know. That hasn't always been super easy, but if you just plug it along, you're going to be able to make it all work well. Everything comes together, and sometimes it's going to need rest, but other than that, we keep moving along. I don't know if you want to do you have a any question you'd like to ask me on what I'm doing. Or something new you like to do or anything like that. I don't know. Very wide open 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 open. One of the things I can say Can you speak up, Christine? Because Doug Spelling is on. I don't know if he can hear you. Okay. One of the things that I'm not sure everyone's aware of. Our business office. Unfortunately, the accounts payable is one of the most sought after jobs in the organization. <laughs> <laughs> so we constantly do routinely have some turnover in that position. Um, so it seems like this year we were kind of locked with it a couple times over, and every time we start new, Angela, I call Angela up and I'm like, okay, we're back to the old way. We got to review it extra, extra careful because the new people are learning the process and they're dotting the I's, crossing the T's. So Angela always is very patient with us and doing it. Um, we have a great two that are in there working kind of hand in hand with it. Dee Hagen and Jessica McCree are doing a phenomenal job. They've really only been doing it for six, eight months now, and um, they've taken it under hand. But each time Angela kind of has to work with them and you know revisit the process, revisit, and make sure they, they know what we're doing. So between Angela and them, it's been they've been a great team um, in making sure. In this transition is not an easy transition in, in this place is you know, a lot of things come at you from a lot of different angles so uh, you know to them and the angel of the patient and working with them um, so it's been a good, a good team effort there that makes those claims on reports that you guys see and that kind of stuff a lot less And to that extent, too, we, we, Dr. Steve and I have conversations about longevity of that position, and we've seen a lot of significant amount of turnover in the position, like I think Angela just said, and Kristen said the same thing, and evaluating uh, that position on this year. So they're early in the process. They're still within their first year with us, but we're seeing great promise early on that they're strong and their employees and want at CBS long term. So continue on those discussions with the board um, about how do we make that a reality. Right, and, and so that's we'll be having those ongoing conversations. Do we know why we've had the turnover? I mean, yeah, it's a process, but yeah, so we currently hire an account clerk typist to fulfill that accounts payable function. Their wages in the account clerk typist field are when you compare it to the city of Plattsburgh, the town of Plattsburgh, um, the county. We're about seven, eight thousand dollars less than what they would pay uh, for an individual in that place, and sometimes even more than that. Um, and similar in school districts around us. Um, that is the other issue is that it's, it's kind of, I'm, I'm not going to say it's kind of, it is more specific to accounts payable. Uh, that That's what it is. It's all about accounts payable. So that account for type is designation, it's more focused than that, right? So you're getting a general clerical support person. Um, and, and this is actually more of a focus on accounts payable solely. Um, so, so evaluating those two positions is something that Dr. Dave and I have been doing. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. I, I would recommend that this is just my thoughts watching them. I can see everyone's work all over the organization, but those girls in that department, you know, that could be some type of 
say, and I know Mr. Bell and I, and I know Mrs. Myers has been involved, and we've definitely looked at these comparisons, make sure that we're, we're appropriate for the market. I think, Mr. Bell, you acknowledged already that there is some differences there. Um, you know, so there's a process. I know that's something that we ultimately would bring back to the board, but, you know, with collective bargaining agreements and such, it's it, it definitely is something worth looking at, um, especially for the long-term sustainability position, because it's a critical are we hamstring in some way by, by contracts as to what we can do to them? In that title, yes. In a different title, no. So now that we may need to look at a different title for them. Just like I would love to see our nurses in a different title. I'd love to see them in the teachers. To be honest with you. I know it's money. But... <laughs> Mr. Spill, I wanted to ask if you had any questions for Angela Jeanette. None at this point. Okay. With that, Angela, thank you. I uh, really appreciate you being in here and, and giving that presentation. I know you're going to help us make sure we're managing traffic into this building. Before you go, I just want to take a moment and thank you. Uh, Mr. Nat, also Ms. Walton, for both of your work. Um, I, I can share with you many times, Ms. Jeanette is here late, so is Ms. Moulton, and they're doing yeoman's work. They're paying you know, close attention to what their responsibilities are, do an excellent job, and so I can really acknowledge and want to thank them personally on behalf of the organization, but as a district superintendent, for their, their thorough and attentive work. And, and I know uh, Mrs. Myers as well for your leadership in making sure you answer those questions, Mr. Bell. So we've got a really good team and we've got great folks who are stepping up and doing a good job and want to provide the support. Here. So thank you. I want to thank you. That is all for that. And uh, to be honest, <laughs> that product is for the task. So I, she is here on the right to We appreciate it very much.
for any question at any given time. I'll listen to the very clear line on the answer. Thank you, Angela. Uh, next on our agenda is our chance to meet with our payroll uh, claims auditor, payroll auditor Jesse Moulton, as you've already met. She also fulfills the role of deputy claims auditor on the back of Tango and Jeanette. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jesse. Welcome to the meeting. Hello, Jesse Moulton. I'm from here at since Started in as a payroll auditor since the beginning of 2011. I've been just about a year, so she's she a long time. So. Um, but um, mostly what I do when I'm an extra set of eyes looking at um, time sheets for each payroll. Um, and my main focus is on you know, any 12 month employees that are. Submit the time sheet just to, to make sure there's no overlap with the regular uh, working hours. Um, and for the time we have to, you know, watch for all the time. Um, and then if I see, you know, usually it's the same names, but if I see new names, I, I know they're in the I just kind of check to make sure they've been set up right. Sometimes it's a little hectic because it's, of course, just all time sheets, you know, it depends on the um, electronic time sheets now um, that we're still on this five minute. So, sometimes it does get a little bit. Other than that, I think I said, I used to watch for um, checking these back, make sure they're sure ready to pay is correct, watch for them over time. Yeah, when Jesse says watch for it, those are the things she typically finds. So she is is really good at finding those items. We with our schedules, especially uh, sometimes employees can be working at a 35 hour week, sometimes it's 37 and a half, uh, sometimes it's 30. So you always have to look at at the contract. What time of the year is it? If they're claiming extra hours, they're paying straight time or double time. And I will tell you, our payroll clerk Brenda Pru is phenomenal. She's really, really. Uh, Fantastic at her job, but then there's things that slip through the cracks and, and she misses things. She, she may pay them incorrectly, but people also fill out their time sheets incorrectly as well. Um, and, and guess who's there as that um, final review? Of, uh, we may have made the payment already, but she's going to review uh, that payroll and then we correct it on future payroll. Sometimes it's we pay employees more, sometimes it, uh, we, we pay them less in the future. So um, she does a phenomenal job uh, on a bi monthly basis. So, Mr. McKay, you're hedging a little bit to our audit report, but yes, <laughs> um, we do have uh, sometimes it's still manual. So, we started transition to uh, electronic time sheets. Our special education division and our instructional services center division transition to those electric time sheets. Pandemic hit in that year as we were transitioning. Uh, next on the list was CB Tech, then management services and the district office. We're transitioning next. Those have not happened yet. So we're, we're about halfway there. Our auditors have written us up in our management letter to finish that product this school. There's a lot of dependency settings because a lot of different. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I added about 20%. I don't have to watch your time sheet. Yeah, you got it. Um, oh, no, she's <laughs> Uh, any questions online, Mr. Spilling, for Jesse Mullen? Nope, it sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Have a good night. Yep. Appreciate your work. Thank you. Next up, uh, we have our visitors, like Dr. Davian mentioned. We have Mike and Amy online. 
with us to discuss our 2021 uh, audit report. So the floor is yours, Steve. Thank you very much. And you all should have received a draft copy of the financial statements. The five point plan says that we are to present the financial statements to the audit committee and it's the audit committee's job to make a recommendation to the board for acceptance of those financial statements. Once they are accepted, they are sent to OSC, New York State SED, and then we certify them and send them off to the federal government. So the financial statements start on page one, and that is our independent auditors report. And at the bottom of page one, we say, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly. That is an unmodified opinion. That is the highest opinion we have as a profession. After the opinion, you have what is called management discussion and analysis. That is on page three through 11. It has been part of the financial statement since 2002. And it's a opportunity for the reader to have a condensed version of the financials and have a better understanding of what happens at the BOCES. I do want to point out a couple things in the MDNA. And the first one would be on page seven. So if you are looking at this and you are looking at the top line, which says revenues, charges for services, that is really what we do at the BOCES. We charge our components and other BOCES for services. They pay us. And you see it dropped quite a bit from 67 million to 36 million. And the reason for that drop is in 2020, the components paid for the current capital project. So they paid in all the dollars to finance the capital project. That was a revenue in 2020, and it would, did not reoccur in 2021. So next year, when we look at this, you'll probably see the charges for services within a few hundred thousand dollars of each other. Also in here, you see other revenues are quite a bit higher. If you recall, we sold off our aviation program to Hudson Valley Community College in Troy, and that revenue was sale of property and goes into other revenues in Abosis. So that's a little bit of a difference year over year in the Abosis. Also in the MDNA, on page 10 and over onto page 11, there's something called factors bearing on the BOCES future. Previously to GASB 34, there was no place for management to discuss the financial statements. So the MDNA gave them an opportunity to tell the reader what issues are coming up into the future. And that's been page 10 and 11. Page 12 is the statement of net position and actually starts the financial statements. Now, the statement of net position is on the full accrual basis of accounting. GASB 34 requires this to be in the financials. New York State does not allow BOCES or school districts to do their everyday accounting on a full accrual basis of accounting. So if you look at the statement of net position, you see that our deficit net position is 90,988,211,000. We audit four other BOCES. All of our other BOCES are also in a big deficit net position. There's a couple contributing factors to this. The first one, if you look where it says total liabilities about a quarter of the way up the page, and then two lines up, it says other post-employment benefits, and it says 178,380,129. That is GASB 75, that is the study of the future health insurance cost that the BOCES is going to incur based on the current number of retirees, employees, the um, current cost of health care, the trends in health care costs, so they've come up with a full accrual liability of that, and that contributes to our net deficit position. The other thing in a BOCES that really contributes to the net deficit position is the fact that each year we give back our surplus to the school districts. So we are not building an unassigned fund balance. 
which would increase our net position. So this is required to be in the financial statements. We've placed it in the financial statements. And, you know, New York State has come out and said there is no funding mechanism for this other post employment benefits. And we will continue to be pay as you go, which means each year we build a budget and we put the retiree health insurance and the current employees health insurance in the budget and pay it. So 90 million dollar deficit net position on a full accrual basis of accounting. On page 14. Page 14 is the balance sheet as of June 30th, 2021. And this is modified accrual. And this is the basis of accounting of which we are required by New York State to account on. So when you look at the first column, it's the general fund. And the general fund accounts for almost all of the activities that happen in a BOCES. So the assets are 10.3 million, the liabilities 5.7. And the difference is what we call fund balance. GASB 54 says there's five categories of fund balance. New York State has come out and said BOCES cannot have committed funds. So we have four. The first one you see is non spendable, 52,547. It's prepaid expenses. So it's not in the form of cash. That's why it's non spendable. The second is restricted. And you see, we have a reserve for ERS. That's very important because if there are spikes in the ERS rate, we can utilize this reserve in order to pay that bill. Then we have a reserve for the TRS. Now that's new a few years ago, and you can only fund that 2% per year up to 10 years, and that is used for spikes in the TRS rate. And just so you know, the TRS rate has been as low as 0.68. It's been as high as 25% over the years, and it's currently at about 9.8%. Then we have the unemployment insurance reserve, very important in a BOCES, because if we lay people off, although New York State does pay them their unemployment, New York State then turns around and rebills us for that unemployment. So having an unemployment insurance reserve is very important. And then we have an employee benefit accrued liability reserve, and there's 1,374,000 in that. That reserve is only to be used when somebody separates from service, they retire, and they have sick or vacation time that we owe them per a contract. So that is what that reserve is for. And then you see unassigned negative 52,547. And you see that's the same as the prepaid expenses. And the reason is, as I was saying on the previous page, as a BOCES, we give back our surplus, so we never build an unassigned fund balance. The second column is special aid fund. The special aid fund accounts for all of the grants that we receive, and there is no fund balance, and typically there is no fund balance in a special aid fund because we are given allotments of money, and as we spend those monies, we then request reimbursement the revenue equals the expenditure, and thus no fund balance is built. The third count, the school lunch fund, is there for lunch and breakfast activities. And you see that there's some non spendable money, and this time it's inventory. So that was leftover food, leftover paper products, anything of that nature, non cash again. And then you see assigned fund balance 103,197. So the reason it's in assigned is because GASB 54 said, if you have a positive fund balance and it's in a fund, it must be assigned to that fund. So school lunch fund is pretty healthy as of 6-30-21. Um, the COVID epidemic has really helped boost this school lunch fund. So we'll see what happens when we come out of COVID. The fourth column, capital projects, you can see we have a fund balance of 12,221,293. Most of that money in fund balance is the money I talked about back on page seven when the components gave us almost $30 million to do the capital project. Additionally, in here is the CTE reserve. So career and technical education monies 
and that's a very important reserve in a BOCES because if we need to buy a bulldozer, it could be upwards of a couple hundred thousand dollars. So very expensive equipment that we utilize at a BOCES. So having that reserve is very important. And then the last column, CM, you see there's $47,000 in there. And that's new this year. What happened was Gasby said, you no longer can have a trust in agency fund. So a lot of the payroll liabilities moved over to the general fund and extra classroom, any types of scholarships, those things had to be moved to a CM fund. So basically at the end of June 30, 2021, if you look where it says total fund balance and you look all the way across, it's 16,948,404. That is quite a difference from the previous page of a $90 million deficit. And the one thing to remember here is a lot of that fund balance though from the capital fund will go away or has gone away, gone away as the summer progressed. We spent a lot of money on the capital project. So, but as of June 30, 2021, from a modified accrual base of accounting, the BOCES is really in good shape. After that, page 17 through 43, notes to the financial statement. The notes to the financial statement are very important. They provide a lot of detail about the numbers I was speaking about. Just if you looked at page 17, it, where it starts, you would see the reporting entity. It lists out all the components of the BOCES and it starts the significant accounting policies. Page 30 in the notes talks about the reserves that I spoke about on the balance sheet and it gives you the general municipal law of why they're allowed and how they must be spent. I just gave you a quick overview of them. Page 35 is another important page. If you look at note three on page 35, you will see that we have cash of $17 million. And this note is saying that the BOCES has properly gone out and received collateral on this money because if there was a bank failure, you would only get $250,000 from the FDIC per bank. So in this case, third parties have collateralized our money. In the event of a banking collapse, we would receive all of our monies that we had in the bank. Page 38, I'll just point this out. This is a three-year chart of TRS and ERS. And this is one of the things that is pay as you go. So I didn't show you on that government wide deficit of 90 million, but there is a liability for the TRS and ERS systems. But again, New York state is not allowing funding of that um, deficit. They're not asking us to pay it each year. We pay into the ERS and TRS systems. And you can see we're paying about $700,000 a year into ERS and a little over a million each year into the TRS system. Page 39, although I don't like the fact that we had to book that $178 million GASB 75 other post-employment benefits, I do like that they have this table on page 39 that shows you what's going on with the health care so if you look at this chart right here, it says inactive employees currently receiving benefits 236, active 321, 557. So this is going to be the downfall of school districts and BOCES in the future. We have several school districts at this time that the inactive employees already exceed the active employees. So as New York State loses population, these type of things. People retire at 55, stay on the health insurance longer. You will see that the inactive pass the active. And when we're building that administrative budget, the more and more and more legacy costs we have to put in, the less we can really do, you know what I'm saying? So it's a tough situation that schools are gonna be in. 
After that, page 43, the only new note in the financial statements. So note 12, restatement of net position. As I said, the GASB 84, Governmental Accounting Standards Board came out with 84 this year and got rid of the trust and agency fund. So this note just shows how we move the money around in order to comply with GASB 84. After that, we have pages 41 or 44 through 47, and those are required supplemental information. And those are basically a rehash of the numbers again in other formats. And the required supplemental information, that means GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board has required them. Pages 48 through 51 is supplementary information. And that means somebody other than GASB has required them. And that's either the New York State Comptroller or SED. So after that, I will turn it over to Amy. So after the regular financial statement audit, the next part of our audit starts on page 53. So Michael showed you on page one and two, we had our first opinion on the financial statements. Page 53 and 54 is the second opinion that we issue. This is our report on internal controls over financial reporting and compliance. So while you're, we're not an internal auditor and we don't look at all of your internal controls, we do review your controls specifically over financial reporting. And um, as we've mentioned in the past, the business office does a phenomenal job. If we get everything we need. We get it very timely. The books and records are in ex excellent shape. We're not proposing audit adjustments. Everything is very clean. The controls are working and working very effectively. So we have no significant deficiencies or no material weaknesses to note here. It's a clean opinion. And then starting on page 55, um, and go in 56, we have our third opinion. So, because the BOCI spends more than $750,000 of federal money, we have to do a compliance audit with grants. And each year, when we look at the grants, we will we rotate what we test based on size, risk, things like that. In the past, we've looked at a lot at your student financial aid program, but this year, because of the pandemic and because of the free food for the students. With the school lunch program, we were able to look at the school lunch program specifically this year, which is not really hasn't risen to a level for us to test in the past at the, at, for the compliance part. Um, and we had no findings associated with the school lunch program. So that is as well as a single audit or a uh, clean opinion. Then on page 57, we have the, the federal expenditures that the BOCES has. So at the bottom of the page, 1,758,209 is what the BOCES spent federally. That's come up, that makes up your school lunch program. That's your student financial aid cluster. And that's a little, little bit of CARES money that the BOCES did receive um, in regards to the, the adult ed program. And then jumping ahead to page 60 is just a nice one page summary of everything we went over. It says that we have unmodified opinions. We had no material weaknesses, no significant deficiencies, and then we specifically, in regards to the compliance audit, looked at the school lunch program. Then after that, we have the, the audit of the extra classroom activity funds. So as Michael mentioned before, we have the new accounting pronouncement for GASB 84. That made the extra classroom activity funds have to be recorded in the CM fund. But New York State Education Department does require a separate audit over these funds specifically, uh, and these are on a cash basis method for so for this audit. So 62 and 63 is the opinion over extra class. Um, and as we've talked about in the past, we do have a modification of the opinion. It's nothing specific to what the BOCES or how the BOCES is operating. All 27 di districts and five BOCES that we audit have this modification. And all it really states is the audit trail for us begins at the point of deposit into the bank. And then if you go to flip to page 65, you'll see the, the clubs that the BOCES has, um, about 11,600 in the clubs at the end of the year. Looking at the activity, we, you know, you'll see a little bit less in, in 2021, just because of the pandemic, less fundraising happened, things like that. So, but overall, that those are the clubs that you guys have. And then the very last piece of the audit is on page 67 and 68. This is our management letter. These are things that, do not rise to any level to modify any, any opinions. These are just things that when we go through our audit, we bring to the attention of the management and the board ways to improve controls or efficiencies. The format of the report, the, the letter is we give you an update on any comments that we had last year, and then we give you any new comments that we had this year. So in regards to the prior year findings, the first and the second one um, are pretty much corrected. So the first one is completely corrected. We had no um, coasters that went from positive to negative. The second one in regards to personnel files, um, we are saying it's in process. 
we were, when we were there to do the audit, all the personnel files were being scanned at that time. So that's, that will be, that is corrected pretty much as well. We did have two comments this year and you guys did steal our thunder a little bit on the second one, Eric, and, but that's okay. Um, the first one is in regards to bidding. So this is the school lunch program. So we spent when we specifically looked at the compliance audit, we had to look at the bidding in regards to school lunch. And what happened this year, because the BOCI spent more and purchased more because they served more meals, um, a couple of the um, the vendors went over the um, bidding requirement. And so they were not, they weren't purchased from vendors in accordance with the purchasing policy. So we're just recommending that this BOCES review its policy and buy only from vendors that are awarded the bid or are on state contract. And again, this was kind of a one off year just because there was more expenditures, more food purchase, things like that. And the second one, Eric, pretty much already talked about, but this is in regards to the time cards and the payroll and just kind of getting everybody into that um, electronic time card system. But as you can see, I mean, very minor uh, management letter comments. The BOCES does a phenomenal job with their books and records and the audit goes very, very well. And I know that was kind of a brief overview of the large financial statements in this large document, but did anybody have questions or anything they like to talk about specifically in regard to the financials or the audit process at all? No. No, good overview, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, great overview, you guys are amazing. Uh, it can't be, it cannot be overstated about uh, the amazing work that Christine Meyer and the Management Services team does on a daily basis and an annual basis. Uh, if you were not here at the beginning of this meeting, I was talking to Mike and Amy, uh, and, and they said they truly enjoy coming to our BOCES because when they arrive, the books are ready for them to review. Everything's in order. Um, and it's where they need it, and when they have questions, they are answered, and they get results fast from Christine and team. And you would think that would be normal, but I would tell you that is that is not typical. Um, and so, so we owe um, a lot of that kudos to Christine. Uh, she she's been phenomenal. We've heard it; it's a broken record. We can't say it enough, and we can't overstate it. I have a privilege of having you. I think it was in the corporation. I, I, I might crack a whip and keep them all going and keep it going, but without them, it, it would not be pulled off in the summer from close and start of the year and that there's a lot that's expected of them. Um, and this team was really great right now with the that we have and everybody did. So, um, so I, I wish I could share and take it all. Um, I do my part, but we truly is a phenomenal Effort. Nice clean and buttoned up again, so that's what we like so we can keep moving forward. I truly want to share all that good old Thank you. And Mike and Amy, if you would stay on, we only have two agenda items, and I know we normally would have to come up, but just in case our, our committee members have any questions that come to mind or in our other topics, you're here to assist and help. Uh, the next agenda item uh, is the annual review of our audit committee charter. So, a part of the charter actually says that we will review it annually. So, this is our opportunity for committee members to uh, offer any requests for changes to our charter, updates, um, really discuss it if they have any issues with it by opening to the floor for any items that any committee member would like to bring up. I don't have anything. Nothing for me. Okay. Do you officially accept the audit to be presented before the presentation? Sure. So I will uh, present to this committee uh, the opportunity to move forward the audited financial statements as presented by Mike and Amy from Weston Company to the full board of uh, BOCES board at tonight's meeting. I'm going to make that motion. Okay. And for our three board members, should vote. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and, and so now with that successful vote, I too want to offer my thanks and appreciation to our, our management services team, our auditors, as well as our, our own internal team for, again, a job well done, attention to detail, um, and really exceptional hard work 
to really pull, provide everything needed, but also to do things right throughout the year. Um, things were not, you know, glossed over. There was attention to detail each step of the way. And we're open, Mike and Amy, to, to your suggestions as well. You've been with us quite a few years, but you also know that we've got a good team who take their job seriously. And, and, and that's really important, especially in this day and time where any inconsistencies really can can become problems very quickly and and really cause you know concerns for everyone um, so we're very fortunate to have a great team and great leaders and mrs myers and your team thank you mr bell your team as well it's a great leadership team and great you know financial responsibility is is taken and accountability um to do a job well done and and to make sure that it continues to do that manner. so thank you thank you dr davy uh, next item up on our agenda is uh, reserve plan review. And Mike, thank you for pretty much running us through our reserve balances. Uh, this document uh, hasn't changed in the actual uh, meat of the document where I'll direct your attention is to the end. So the last page is, is labeled page seven um, or six G as, as your packet would have it um, to talk about uh, some of the changes for this upcoming year in 21-22. So right now we don't have any intended uses for the reserves. Uh, so we're gonna analyze, see how things uh, work out. One of the areas where we, we thought we would have been dipping in in 2021 was the unemployment reserve. I know we did speak with our budget committee uh, as well as the full board on the potential for having to spend out of that reserve because of the significant unemployment cost, cost we were seeing throughout the year. And then New York State and the federal government ended up covering those costs in full. So mm -hmm. we did not have to use the reserve. But we don't have any foreseen uses or we did not budget any use for those reserves in 21 22. But again, we will uh, see what the future brings. And then the next one I want to talk about was the reserve funding priorities for 21 22, the employee benefit approved liability reserve, uh, continuing to fund that annually. Uh, our, our liability is, is about $1.6 million. We're about 1 million in that reserve. So we're, we're just over $600,000. You can see $639,000 underfunded uh, in that reserve. We'd like to continue that progress that we've been making over the years. The board's been committed to that. The audit committee has, and we're appreciative of it. Um, as I already said, it's an important one to make sure we do fund. Uh, so we in the plan, we have designated again, I, uh, funding of that at $300,000 is a goal for this year. I think it's going to depend on where are our uh, balances at, at the end of the year. Um, then the other item was the TRS reserve. Like Mike had mentioned, you can only uh, fund it at 2% a year up to 10% uh, of your total TRS uh, salaries uh, in a year. Our, our salaries would be rounded down to 10 million. Uh, for the year, so 2% is, is about 200,000. It's just uh, that we can fund it annually. We've done it three years in a row. Uh, our target is to, to have another funding year. So this would be four, and then we'd be one year away from fully funding it. So that's a, that's a priority of ours. Uh, again, allocating $200,000 there, looking at $500,000 at year end, we have the money available to fund those two reserves. That's the, the, the priorities of this plan at this time. Sense to me. Mike, is there any urgency to have a particular purpose for these monies? Um, I don't know if you can Thanks, sir. Um, I was just wondering it's not a situation where we don't use it, we lose it. Should it be a, a should it be a uh, should we have a plan for creating categories or something to create specific purposes for the just so that it says here that it's not to be, you know, just a parking lot. It's like they should be, should be purposeful. Is there any urgency to do that or just respond as, as the necessity comes up? Sir, did you ask if there's any urgency in spending down the reserves? Or, or at least creating the purpose. Like it keeps talking about, you should have a purpose for this fund. You should not well, each of the reserves absolutely has a purpose. And each year, as I showed you on page 
38, we have monies that are spent in ERS and TRS. So those two reserves are absolutely, could be utilized every single year. Also, the accrued benefit liability reserve that Eric was talking about, getting it up to the 1.6 million. Every single year, we do have people that retire or separate from service to have sick days or vacation time that we could pay out of those reserves. And what these reserves really do is they stabilize the BOCES because in absence of these reserves, there would be less money that could go back to the component units if there was a lot of unemployment or if there was a spike in TRS or a spike in ERS rates that would eat up the refund of surplus. So I don't really think we're just parking the money. I think it has a very beneficial use and you don't know when that use is going to come. And Mike, if I may add, uh, great question, Mr. McKay. Um, we actually take into consideration this uh, multiple times throughout the year, two big ones. One is budget time. Um, as we're, we're looking at our budget, what the revenues look like, where our expenditures are at, and considering do we allocate any of these reserve funds to help in our budgeting process. For example, if TRS rate jumps 6%, you may say, all right, let's take some of those TRS funds, we're going we're to bite off 4% this year, and we're going to fund the reserve for 2% increase. Not good for long-term budgeting, but that's part of our discussion with the, with the budget committee. And then year end is, is the other time we really look at this, and it, it might hit it is when we have those retirements. So this past year, we had a significant number of retirements uh, in our organization. So as we started to get those in January timeframe, we started to have those discussions internally how much of this reserve will we have to use? And we analyze our books throughout the year is, can our budgets float these sick leave payouts or are we gonna have to tap into the people our reserve uh, at year end? So they're, they're constantly in discussion. We've been very fortunate to not meet it in the recent history, uh, but going forward, those are the two prime times I can see forthcoming in the next six months that we'll be having those conversations of potentially needing this money more urgent. And I, I, and Mr. McCabe, I will, now I'm going to draw upon my, my colleague, Mr. Myers. There was a time during my first couple of years where we did tap that, I believe that that was the reserve, that for around 300, 300, 300 to 400,000, because of, we, we were running a shortfall. And so we did take advantage to utilize those monies to be able to help fund. And so we, we worked to put some of that money back. But again, it was used, it, it was used to su support the long-term financial stability. Um, so it's really very important to have those funded well, um, especially if you have to tap. I mean, Mrs. Myers, it was, this was the, the, the reserve that we did use that time, correct? I think it was our second or third year. We, we, we actually used all the three reserves under the TRS because that was fewer. Um, we used unemployment. I believe we used that one time. We did all those reserves. Oh, sure. At that time, we had all those fill ups. Uh, I think we might have had a one or two year TRS for the great spike. I think we ended up using that. Actually, that's been used a couple of times and we pushed it. And MLR has also been used um, a couple of times to help the TRS funding to gain back you know, the full you know, the full entry level salary back to the zone. So. Use them and then we try to replenish them during the good years and then the good years. Thank you. Any other questions on the reserve plan? Okay, we've allotted a time for any other topics that board members may have or committee members may have. Okay, future meetings are listed there for your reference. We are planning to be back at the CB Tech main campus in December uh, for a holiday dinner. Uh, if that does change, we'll let you know as committee members, uh, but we will plan that to be at the CB Tech uh, digital artists and design classroom right inside the main entrance. And I appreciate your time today. Seeing no other topics, so I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll see you next Yep, see you at okay. 630. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Right. Spelling, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you, Christine.